To deploy the SMS host, we're going to be using a Vagrant command, Vagrant app. Vagrant app will initialize the Vagrant environment and download the Vagrant virtual machine. The entire process might take some time. I've already pre-cached the download, it's about 420 megs, but in your case, you'll have to download the entire image. Just be careful where you run Vagrant app. When you initialize Vagrant, it will launch the VM from the location of the Vagrant file. If it can't find the Vagrant file where you're currently located, it'll crawl up the tree until it finds a Vagrant file. So in our case, we're located here, which is my user directory, OpenHPC, and the student directory. Now you see inside here, when we do a directory listing, we find the Vagrant file. There it is there. This is, as I've said before, a simple text file. It's based on Ruby, and here's the file. We won't go into much detail about what it's doing, but it does describe the configuration parameters for VirtualBox for the VM. It has some definitions for the virtual machine when it is first launched, including some parameters that we've included in the message to tell you how to access the VM once it's done. We've defined a port forward for SSH, so we use a non-standard SSH port, and you can use the Vagrant SSH command, or you can use a normal SSH command to connect to the VM. Making sure that you're in the location of your Vagrant file, which I've verified there. Same directory, there and there. You can switch to VirtualBox. There's nothing here at the moment. You fire the command Vagrant up, which will tell Vagrant to launch this Vagrant file. And as I've said before, if there was no Vagrant file there, it would crawl up the tree. It would then look for a Vagrant file here. And if it can't find one, it would go one further until it eventually finds a Vagrant file. Now watch the VirtualBox Manager screen here. It's following the definitions of the Vagrant file here. Pento CentOS 7.7. .7. Pento 7.7. .7. This is importing a pre-cached download. In your case, you'll have to download the entire image for the first time. You can see the VM has already st started being created over here. Note the name. We've instructed it to rename the VM. And there it is. It's renamed. You can see there it's set the name. It's, cr it's setting the host adapter, the private network adapter, setting up the port forward, because we've included a Vagrant script here to boot it up the first time, and it will install Vim, Git, Tmux, and Screen. Vagrant is currently waiting to SSH to the VM on localhost port 2229. You can see the VM is busy booting up there. Base memory of 1 gig, 2 processors, 50% cap, as defined there. 1 gig, 2 CPUs, 50% cap, and we've set the graphics controller to VBOX SVGA there. It's now installing the VirtualBox editions going through the entire installation process. When the VM is complete, you can SSH to the VM. You can see the yum command is being invoked, installing four packages. This really does showcase the benefit of Vagrant. We don't have to worry about doing any manual installation of a virtual machine, making sure the parameters are correct according to different iterations of the machine. Everything is defined in a script hosted in the Vagrant file. And we're done. Scrolling back up, you can see the message from the VM. It tells you how to access it. Embracing the Vagrant ecosystem, we can use the command Vagrant SSH. And now we're on the VM. We can verify this by checking what directory we're in host name of the VM and its IP. Take note that ETH1 
is 10, 10, 10, 10. And that is the VM IP address that we defined in our vagrant file, 10, 10, 10, 10. That is the private net for the HPC system. We can exit. We're not restricted to using Vagrant SSH to connect to the VM. In fact, I recommend that you use an SSH client of your preference because that will make copy and paste much easier. And you can SSH to localhost port 229. Looking at the top of the Vagrant file screen, there is a port forward that's been defined that takes port 2229 and forwards it to port 22 on the VM. In the rest of this class, I'll be using my preferred SSH client. I'll be SSHing to localhost port 229.